Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, an internal medicine and rheumatology specialist. Today, I'm on call for internal medicine for 24 hours. I'm seeing consults in the emergency department, admitting patients to hospital, and I'm also on call for any strokes. It's the first time I'm doing a call like this since residency, first time as an independent doctor. So I'm nervous, I'm excited. So let's get going and see if the emergency department already has any consults for me. So this is the internal medicine work area in the eMERGE. And up here on the screen is a tracker where the names of any patients that I need to see will appear. The emergency doctors have asked me to see two patients. The first has shortness of breath, and the other is an elderly patient who's had multiple falls at home. So, let's get to it. As I get into the patient's chart and start working, my nerves start to settle. I've done so much of this as a resident. The only difference is that I don't review my plan with anyone. So I definitely find myself double checking things, but as I finish the second consult, I feel like I'm in the zone. Okay, done seeing my first two consults. Now I'm gonna take this moment to head to the physician's lounge, stock up on some tea before they come find me some more consults to see. Okay, so that first patient who has the shortness of breath, well, it turns out that they become short of breath every time they exert themselves, even a small amount. And I think this is all related to heart disease. They've got all the risk factors, smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. And I suspect that there's some narrowing of the blood vessels in the heart, the coronary arteries. So I called the cardiologist and they're actually gonna plan to do an angiogram today, this afternoon. Uh, so we'll find out is there a blockage and can they open it up? So. Pretty good. Hey, do you have time for one more consult? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I've, I've got this 67 year old lady. She comes in with progressive dyspnea. It's been going on for four or five weeks, but a lot worse the last five or six days. Okay. So she used to be able to walk a block or two, uh, no problem. Now she can't even get across her apartment without being really winded. She's got a new murmur. Uh, I can hear it in a busy, chaotic emerge department, so you know it's probably real. <laughs> okay, yeah. I've ordered some diuretics for her and the rest is waiting for you. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm happy to see her. Walking into the room, I see a patient sitting in bed, hooked up to a cardiac monitor. When I examine her, she has edema in her legs, crackles in the lower lung fields, and her neck veins are distended, all signs that point towards volume overload. And then when I listen to her heart, I hear this murmur. A distinct whooshing sound and I hear the same murmur radiating up to her neck. This is a normal aortic valve. See how thin the leaflets are? Well, in aortic stenosis, the leaflets become thick, which narrows the opening for the blood to flow through. Okay, so that sounds like an aortic stenosis murmur, and that would explain the patient's symptoms. Aortic stenosis is a condition where the heart valve gets smaller and more narrow over time, and it sort of turns into an obstruction, so it's harder for the heart to pump blood out to the rest of the body. So when a person tries to exert themselves, like going up a flight of stairs, the heart can't pump out enough blood, so the person becomes dizzy and they start to feel really short of breath. Fortunately, the valve can be replaced. It used to be always done with open heart surgery, but these days there's a new technique called a TAVR, a transcatheter aortic valve replacement. It's actually really cool. So they'll guide this valve all the way up through the arteries, through the aorta, into the right place, blow up a balloon, and then the new valve is in place. So I think that's what the patient needs, but it's gonna be up to the cardiologist tomorrow morning to decide. And I'm admitting this patient under Mark. I'm still getting used to working in the same hospital. Like, I just love it. Okay, just finished seeing said the seventh patient, <laughs> and I was actually able to send the patient home, which always feels really good. Fewer patients in the hospital, fewer pa patients waiting for beds is a really good thing. And Mark just texted me saying that he got us food. I'm super hungry, so I'm very excited. Let's go find him. <laughs> oh my gosh, food! <gasps> Best husband. So Mark was on call last night, got woken up so many times. It's home call, but if you're woken up that many times, you don't really get a chance to sleep. So you have to go home, seriously. Look at you, you're almost falling asleep here. See you in the morning. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. 
honestly, it's so sweet of him to stick around, bring me food, and he had to wait for a while before I could actually come because I was with a patient. Mm. And this Mexican bowl, mm. so good. Okay, just got a call from the Emerge. Apparently two of the Emerge doctors are looking for me with new patients to see. So, oh guys, okay. We're heading into the evening portion of the night. <laughs> Oh gosh, I just looked up and five names have been added to the tracker. So I think there's five patients that I'm gonna have to see. I'm gonna have to speed up. One thing that's really different in this hospital is that uh, they treat adults and kids in the same hospital, the same uh, emergency department. So I'm not used to hearing babies crying and screaming. Uh, so that's a really different experience. Okay, looks like I can get some sleep now. Um, I have a vague idea where the call rooms are in this hospital, but I've never actually been to them. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of exploring. Here we go. Let's see. Oh my gosh, I thought that was a person. It really scared me. Okay. On call room. Oh, pretty amazing. So one of the big differences compared to residency that I'm just learning about is that emergency doctors will actually hold patients overnight. Like they don't expect you to keep working and admitting patients overnight the whole time. So now it's like 2 a.m. I asked them, you know, any other patients, nothing much going on. So I just kind of said, okay, like I'm gonna go to sleep. So unless it's a code stroke or there's a really, you know, tough case that they wanna discuss with me, I don't think they're gonna page me or call me for the rest of the night. Like, it's such a weird concept. This is what they tell me, but I don't even believe it until it happens. <laughs> so I'm gonna to try to get a little bit of sleep on call. I like this concept. Well, good morning. Um, I didn't get paged. It's a miracle. <laughs> so this is hands down far superior to residency and I'm so grateful. But I'm definitely not the type of person who can get away with four hours of sleep. I need to go home and sleep for another like eight hours. <laughs> I love to sleep when I can. So right now I'm gonna go find Mark. I think he should be getting to the hospital soon. Grab the keys to the car and then I'm out of here. All right, got the keys. So that's a wrap for me. If you guys wanna see more videos like this and be sure to subscribe and that way I'll see you in the next video. So. Bye for now.